Hello everyone. My MPE journey started about 10 years ago when I joined Eigen Labs to work on the Eigen Harp instruments. And since then, I helped out with the MPE spec as part of the expert group, um, made the instrument with Roger Lin, and then joined Moog Music to make the Minimoog Model D, Model 15, and then recently the Animoog Z apps. Um, and over all this time, I sort of expected that DAWs or recorders would catch up to the expressiveness that needs to be recorded when you perform with MPE. And I was surprised that when I wanted to record Animoog Z last month, I couldn't find anything that really preserved all the nuances of my performance. So I started this project called MIDI Tape Recorder, which is fully open source and free. And it basically captures each MIDI message in a sample accurate way by preserving the serial nature, basically the order of all the MIDI messages, because in MPE and also extensions of MPE, like what Animoke Z does, the order is very important. Um, so let's take a quick look at what MIDI Tape Recorder does and how you can use it. So my favorite host on iOS is AUM, made by Jonathan uh, Kematica. And you can create a new MIDI track, and I open MIDI Tape Recorder there. And if you tap on the icon, you can see the window open up. There's four tracks. Um, this is inspired by the four track recorders that I used to use when I was a teenager. And I would really stay into the flow by recording over and over again and moving to the next track, practicing getting better and then laying down sections at a time, um, really trying to get into the flow and stay into the flow. Um, so it's inspired by that workflow. Um, you have various ways of setting this up. I'm going to start setting it up with Animoog Z, which will both be a controller and a synthesizer. Um, so as you launch Animoog Z, you can, you can, you can take a sound that um, you, you might want like this one, almost flying. Um, and then what you have to do is basically connect up two MIDI connections. One MIDI connection to get the controller MIDI information into the recorder, and then another one to get controller, uh, to get the recorded MIDI information back into the synthesizer. Uh, so we're going to um, the AUM MIDI matrix. And here you'll, you might see a difference between the AUM version that you have, because this is a beta of 1.4, where Jonathan added support for multiple virtual MIDI input cables, uh, which is a feature that is not very um, popular. It hasn't been used much in other plugins, um, but it really benefits MIDI tape recorder because it allows you to set up the routing of your MIDI messages in various ways. So here I want to use Animoog Z, so horizontally at the top you'll see the outputs, and I want to route that to the input of MIDI tape recorder. And then the output, the first output of MIDI tape recorder, I want to route it back to Animoog Z. So now they're connected together. And you can check this, you can press a key on Animoog Z, and you'll see the lights light up on the left hand side. Um, so you, you, you'll notice a one, two, four icon in the top left corner. This basically routes the first MIDI channel to all four tracks, which is very handy if you have a host that doesn't support the four individual uh, MIDI inputs, or if you would have a controller, a single controller that you want to use for all four virtual tracks. Um, so here I'm going to use four to four um, just to show how that works. Um, then I'm recording enabling the first track, the track that I will record Animoog Z on, go to Animoog Z MIDI settings and select the MPE channel for output. You'll notice that MIDI Tape Recorder has activated MPE mode for that track and it will remember all the MPE configuration message uh, details in that track so that when you play it back, it will send that MIDI configuration, uh, that MPE configuration message back out so that the synthesizer that receives the MIDI messages will operate in exactly the same way. So now we're ready to record. Um, I'm going to record arm the MIDI tape recorder and then you can simply start performing.
and press stop to stop recording. Now you'll see that there is a visual representation of the messages appearing on the timeline. Um, these are not intended to be perfectly individually represented messages. They're intended to give you an overview of your performance itself, what the phrasing is and how it is structured. So there's two areas. There is the yellow area that indicates the active notes. And then there is the light blue or teal area that indicates all the other MIDI messages that happened uh, at that moment in time. So where that little line is. Um, it's sort of like a heat map of activity. Um, now you, because we've connected the output of the MIDI tape recorder back up to Animoq Z, you can press play. And you'll see that, and you'll hear that everything has been captured and basically plays back exactly the same way as I played it the first time. So a uh, MIDI tape recorder has a few locator markers. Um, you have the loop start and stop points here that you can reconnect, uh, re reposition. You have the playhead and this is the start point. So the playhead can be set by tapping on the timeline, which will make it start from that point when it starts playing. And if you then enable repeat, it will repeat through what you just recorded. Now let's make this a little bit longer here um, and then record something else over it. Um, I'm going, you can double tap to reset to the end. There we go. So everything is back aligned to the end points. For the next step, let's create another Animoq Z instance here. And Let's try this one. So we're picking up a sound here again, but instead of playing it from Animoq, I'll play it from the instrument. So we're going back to the MIDI routings here, and you'll see at the top row, there is Linstrument MIDI hardware output. Um, so I want to connect that to the second track of MIDI tape recorder. And then the second track MIDI output from the tape recorder, I want to connect it to the second Animoq Z. And now when I play on the instrument, you'll see that the activity indicator on the track lights up. So I'm going to record enable again, and I'm going to enable input monitoring. Input monitoring basically passes all the MIDI messages through the MIDI tape recorder to the output, even if they haven't been recorded yet. So this will allow me to basically play the synth with uh, the instrument while it's going through the tape recorder. Um, then the next step, if you want to configure this for MPE use, on the instrument, you'll go to per split settings and then tap and hold the channel per note um, setting, which will switch it from our initial version of channel per note to the official MPE version. And again, you'll see that the MIDI conf uh, the MPE configuration message has been sent out. Uh, the MIDI tape recorder has detected it and will now send this to the synthesizer every time it starts playing. So this sound doesn't seem to be set up for MPE that well. Let me quickly add something in here. Let's take a look. So yeah, the frequency is, is really low of the filter. So we'll create another modulation entry here. So let's take this one at, uh, let's say, mod wheel, which when you use MPE in Animoq Z, basically will correspond to the timbre axis, route it to the frequency, and now... Now I've got individual control over the filter frequency and pressure is routed to delay. That is, let's reduce that a little bit. Um, it might be a little bit too much for MPE use. And I'll increase that one some more. 
Okay, so that is all set up. You'll see that in the MIDI settings, Animoke has detected that MPE configuration message passed through the MIDI tape recorder. So it is set up in MPE input mode. And now I can have record enable on the track. I can arm my recording, start playing to start recording. Yeah, that was not the greatest performance, but this is a little demo. Um, I didn't really rehearse what I was going to play. Um, now I can play this back. Let's say that I don't really like the second part here. I can turn on punch in and punch out recording, set the range where that will happen. So basically what this means is that it will only record over that part of the existing recording. Um, and if you have repeat enabled here, it will continuously loop until you actually recorded at least one MIDI message so that you can wait until you're ready and then actually record. So let's do that. Start from the beginning. Okay. So now you'll notice that MIDI tape recorder has undo and redo. So I can undo to go back through any step in case you actually thought that the previous version was better. Um, it holds up to 20 individual steps in its undo buffer. So this is the basic flow of MIDI tape recorder. You can record up to four tracks. You can also mute the individual tracks while they're playing. So let's say that initially you don't want to hear this one, but then afterwards you want to bring it in. One of the advantages of recording MIDI over audio is that after the fact you can still tweak your sound. So let's say that that modulation on that bass sound with the instrument to filter modulation, I actually wanted it to be a little bit different. So I can increase it still, or maybe make it smaller. So there's a lot of tweaking that you can then still do to the sound. Um, since this is a plugin, you can use your host's preset saving and loading to recall as many performances as you want. And then you can also use the track and the session tools here to clear out parts or to clear out the whole session. And then finally, you can import and export here um, with the blue arrow going down as an import, the green arrow going up as an export. This will export or import the entire session. And here it is an individual track. And there's one more control. The crop control basically reduces uh, the recording to whatever is between the looping start and stop markers. You can save your performance with anything else you set up in your setting. So here, for instance, this is a performance I recorded, which I put on YouTube as the demo video for MIDI tape recorder and everything was restored perfectly. And I can just play it. And since this is MIDI, I can actually speed up the tempo if I want to or slow it back down. Thanks for watching. MIDI Tape Recorder is fully open source, so you can go to GitHub, check out the repository, fork it, make some changes. Um, you can also send me a little donation over PayPal to support the project. I will continue working on it because this is the way that I want to record uh, expressive MIDI performances. And there's still a few things that I might want to add, not full editing features, but there are some interesting ways to massage the data 
um, that could be helpful and to still stay into the flow. So thanks again for spending the time watching this and take care.